Because they come to my office the way they come to your office. Mr. Speaker, a lot of the questions is the public participation funded roads are located by this house every year. And Mr. Speaker, unless there is a proper sensitization and Mr. Speaker, a full discussion by this chamber in a honest manner about the appropriation of these public participation funds, Mr. Speaker, this feeling of marginalization will continue. Most of these maintenance roads under public participation initiative are implemented by CARA. It is notable that all roads under the development budget are itemized and approved by this House. Once Parliament has appropriated and approved the specific project to be implemented, the road agencies will implement. Mr. Speaker, I have a suggestion that, Mr. Speaker, instead of this House, and I, I can only suggest because this House is supreme to all of us, instead of this House allocating the $21 billion to either new projects or projects that are below $10 million or maintenance of roads, Mr. Speaker, if this $21 billion was available to support the pending bills, Mr. Speaker, most of our contractors would have come back to site to make sure that those roads are progressing. But this is a suggestion. I have no uh, control as to this house, what this house decides, Mr. Speaker. I am just suggesting to the House that if you can consider, Mr. Speaker, supporting the, the, the pending bills, it will be great. While the MIPS is committed to equity, it is worth noting that some of the factors considering discussion about inequity, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, I conclude by saying this. Not, is, not all is gloom, Mr. Speaker. The government has been working extremely hard for the last one year to speak to our development partners, both bilateral and multilateral. I speak with experience, Mr. Speaker, because you, you know and I have appraised you on this issue. I have had to travel to many different parts of this world, Mr. Speaker, and particularly to one of our bilateral partners' countries to try to request them to consider supporting us. Mr. Speaker, the conversations are in advanced stage. Mr. Speaker, I believe that in another two or so months, I should be able to come back to this chamber, if invited again to give the good news to honorable members that some of our critical number of our roads will resume, Mr. Speaker, thanks to the efforts we are working to make sure that those development partners support us. And Mr. Speaker, in, with utmost respect, I want to thank those development partners for listening to the Republic of Kenya and for listening to Excellency the President, having uh, uh, been a member of his delegation to many of these countries to, to deal with this issue. The last issue, Mr. Speaker, is to thank the development partners for helping us deal with the question of Eurobond, because this is where the devil lies. It is the Eurobond payment, Mr. Speaker, that is due of $2 billion that has made it impossible for us to either borrow for infrastructure or, Mr. Speaker, to be able to uh, get other resources allocated and even for our budget to be constricted, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I sit down, many members here may feel that I am a bit hard when it comes to the question of these public resources. Mr. Speaker, I have been a victim, a victim, Mr. Speaker, of, of Mr. Speaker berating harassment on something, Mr. Speaker, I have zero control. If I had a chance to sit where my colleagues sit, and we have sat with them in this house, Mr. Speaker, I would use this floor to, Mr. Speaker, correct the injustice and the marginalization. Because if you take this punishment to an innocent cabinet secretary, who has zero role in allocating of money or budget, Mr. Speaker, it would be unfair in the Republic of Kenya. And I, I, I say this, Mr. Speaker, with all my heart. I am the only cabinet secretary, I don't want to praise myself, who has invited as many counties, I'm now in county number 26, to come for an open discussion without considering a political side to ask ourselves, how shall we deliver on this very difficult road function in the absence of the budget that we have been given. So, Mr. Speaker, even when, uh, when we feel the pain, and I, I, I have spoken to my friends here, when we feel the pain, and the pain of our voters saying, we are stuck in mud, the roads are not progressing, this pain is a collective responsibility of leadership at such a time as this. And I promise this House, I will not sleep until we succeed to return all the contractors to go on site. And there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, honorable members.
Uh, this was Robert Moy's question. The minister, hold on. Uh, the, the, the CS is no longer on the floor, so there's nothing out of order. The question belongs to Robert Mbui, but the minister has wandered far and wide on the issue. I'll give the first shot to the questioner, Robert Mbui. Then I'll give minister, you note the questions. I'll give five. You answer. Those